I wanted to take a moment to show you some really cool stuff that you can do with what's called deep linking and uh, maps. So I've just got a little demo app here that lets you search for a location and then creates that location in the database. All right, so I've just got users, locations, uh, a name, which I'm not even going to use. I'm just going to use this location property here. Uh, I've already put in my Google Maps API key. All right, uh, if you don't know how to get this, uh, there's another video on that as well that I will link to. Um, but once you've got this, uh, you should be able to use this feature. Uh, you don't need a Google Maps API key to do uh, exactly what we're doing today, though. Um, we're just going to be basically making it so that when a user taps on this little car icon, uh, I want to show them a modal that lets them choose which map, uh, which map uh, app they want to use to get directions to that location. All right? Um, and we can do this through uh, deep links so that when they click on it, uh, it will actually open that app on their phone uh, from the Adalo app. So if they're using an Android device or whatever, or you know they, they want to use Google Maps, they can click on it and it'll take them to, uh, it'll open up Google Maps with the driving directions already started. All right. So th there's some really cool stuff that you can do with deep links here. Um, let me go over here to the Google Maps. Well, uh, actually, let's create a modal first to do this. So let me go over here. I'm going to select this list here. I've got a right section here, this icon. When they click on this, let's just link to a new modal screen. Let's go down here to miscellaneous. We'll choose a modal. Make sure that the transition is set to modal. And... Uh, choose your map provider, all right? And I don't really need these buttons, actually, so I'm just going to delete these. And we'll maybe extend this down a little bit. Let's go ahead and drag in some, some other buttons here. Drag in one here. Let me make it a little bit wider here. Uh, and this one's going to be maybe like Google Maps. All right, and this one's going to be maybe Apple Maps. And let's add one more. Uh, I'm going to show you three today. This one is going to be Waze, which ironically is owned by Google now. So um, how do we do this? How can we make it so that, you know, when they choose their map provider, it takes them and opens their respective app? Well, we can do this through deep linking. And I've got three tabs open here. One is to the Waze documentation, how to use their deep links. I've got one to the Google Maps documentation, showing how to use their deep links. And one to Apple's documentation, showing how to use their map links. Um, and I will link these in the description of the video as well so that you have access to these. Um, let's focus on Google for now, though. Um, if you... Once you get on this documentation, you'll see very quickly that we don't need any authentication or any API keys to do this, right? So if you've just got like a, uh, uh, you know, your users are entering these addresses manually or the, the address never changes, you can just create one of these links and it'll work, uh, which is pretty cool. So there's kind of four different options here. I can either search for a specific place and it will display the results. I can request directions and launch Google Maps with the results. Uh, and I think this is probably the one that we're going to be using uh, this time around. Um, we're, we can display a map. So there's no markers or directions if you just want to open Google Maps. Um, and then you can even display like a street view panorama of a specific location if street view exists for that location, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and do this one, though. I'm going to just kind of copy this URL here. And you'll notice that this end here that says and parameters, these are the kind of the defining characteristics. Uh, these are what's going to tell Google exactly what we want to look at or exactly what we want directions to. And this is the case for all of these different deep links that we're going to look at today. They all kind of function the same way, all right? So I'm just going to copy this link. And then over here on our Maps demo, I'm just going to click on this button. And then we're going to add an action to link to a website. And I'll just paste this in here. Now, 
if I just leave it like this, it's not going to really do anything. It's just going to kind of open Google Maps. So if that's all you're trying to do, then that's pretty much all you need to do, right? It's just going to open Google Maps and kind of show you that application on the user's phone. But what I really want to do is kind of add in some extra stuff here to specify what I want it to, what I want to look at. So uh, all I really have to do, you, you can go as far down into this documentation as you want, right? And you know, define queries and locations and all this stuff, right? Categorical search. Um, you can do all these kinds of things. Um, but essentially, we want to define the destination that we want to get to. And there's two parameters here that I, that I really want to use in this case. One is the destination parameter here, which defines the endpoint of the directions. So if there's not one that's provided, it'll just kind of provide a blank form to let the user enter where they want to go. Um, and I want to do this one, direct uh, uh, direction action navigate, right? And even though this is optional, this launches those turn by turn directions immediately, right? Uh, and if you don't want to do that, then just leave this off, right? Uh, so but those are the two that we're going to add to this. So to, to do this, I'm just going to go here. Uh, the first one is just destination. So I'll just copy this. We'll go back to our link here, to the end of it. I'm gonna add an ampersand symbol here to show that I want to include this parameter in the URL. I'll paste my destination in and then I'll put the equal sign here. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go to the current locations, location full address, right? And you, um, these typically have to be URL encoded in order for Google to get it. Don't worry about that. Uh, Adalo does that for you automatically for all of these external links that you put in here, right? It, it kind of handles that on the back end for you. So you can just put in the location full address there. Um, and then we need to add another ampersand here for the this uh, direction action na equals navigate, right? And this is going to tell Google Maps that, hey, we want to immediately start the navigation to this uh you know, to this place, right? Um, and I'll show you what this looks like in just a second. But let's go ahead and get, uh, let's go ahead and do this for the Apple Maps side of things, all right? So let's go to Apple Maps here. We'll kind of do the same thing. We'll go to link website and let's go to the Apple Map Links documentation. Now this one's a little bit more interesting. Uh, it's, it's a little bit simpler to use. There's a bunch of different parameters here, right, that, that you can use. Um, I like using this D-A-D-D-R, dadder, um, and basically it's the destination address. So this is it kind of equivalent to the destination parameter in Google, right? Um, you've got a bunch of different ones here as well. You can use query, right? You can use, say, Q equals and then search for something um, and see what pops up. Um, so you can kind of explore these on your own, but the dadder one is the one that I'm going to be using here. And the one that I, the, the, the kind of the base URL, if you will, of this is just this uh, maps.apple.com with the question mark. The question mark tells us that we want to include parameters on the end of this URL here. And instead of the Q, like see this says Q equals Mexican restaurant, right? Uh, this example, we're going to use this data. Okay. So we'll just paste this in here. And the data, I'm going to put an equals to tell it this is the address that I want to search for. And same thing here. We're going to go for the current locations, location, full address. All right. And that will start the directions to the address that we specify. And final thing for Waze, again, same thing here. We're going to link to a website. We'll go to the Waze Deep Links. And this one is a little bit more interesting in the fact that we should probably use the latitude and longitude. And you can see that there's a, kind of a good example here that you can literally just copy paste to do this. Um, we will have to change the latitude and longitude, but that's very easy to do with our location property that we have. So I'm just going to copy this. We'll go back to our deep links demo here, kind of paste it in there. And again, I found my question mark here. So I want to place all of my parameters after this question mark. LL stands for latitude, longitude. So I'm going to take out everything from this ampersand symbol up to the equal symbol here. Right. And you'll see this, this as well. This is a good tidbit. This percent to C, 
This is the URL encoding for this for a comma, um, but you don't even have to worry about this. Uh, you don't even need to put this back in. Uh, I'll show you kind of what we can do. So I'm just going to take this out, and I'm going to go to the uh, current locations location latitude. I'm going to put in a comma, physical comma, not the URL encoding, because remember, a dollar does that for us. We'll go to our magic text again. We'll go to the current locations location longitude. Right? We've already got that ampersand symbol in there, so we're good there. We're telling it, yes, go ahead and navigate. This is very similar to the Google uh, version of it, right? Uh, yes, go ahead and navigate. And this is setting the zoom of the directions, right? So this is kind of an optional parameter that you can either include or increase, decrease to determine how zoomed in you want the, the directions to be on your car, basically. Uh, so that is pretty much all you have to do. And I will show you kind of what that looks like on an actual phone. All right, so I'm here in the app that we've got set up. I've got my location search and my save location. I'm just going to add one. Oops, I'm just going to add one, one location here. And this is the university in my hometown here. So we'll just save that location. And when I click on the car icon here, you can see we, we've got our modal. Uh, I want to get the Google Maps first. So it's going to open up the Google Maps and start those driving directions there. And let's go back. We'll click the done there. And let's try the Apple Maps version. So it gives us kind of the, the routes. We can pick a couple of different routes here is the way Apple's works. And then if we go back and click done, we'll do the Waze one as well. So you can see that it's picked it up and it's tried to start the, the, the navigation there. All right. All right, I hope it was cool to actually see that at work on a device. Uh, I want to emphasize as well that it does work a little bit differently on a native device than it does in a preview. Uh, so when you go to actually link out to the app, it will actually open the, the respective Maps app uh, based on which one you select. Um, but whenever you go back or you know go back, and instead of going back to a Safari, a saved Safari bookmarked page, it'll just go back to your native app uh, that, that you're going back to. So uh, some other cool things that you can do here is let's say you didn't want to provide you know a modal with buttons. Uh, you could actually place some conditional actions on this guy right here. So instead of putting the actions over here on these buttons, you would place the actions here on this button. Uh, in the list and you can actually use uh, some components from the marketplace here uh, ooh, Actually, let me go in here and search for it. Yeah, so you can use either one of these components uh, and place it on that uh, the main screen there and we can actually uh, get information about the device that the that the that the end user is using and we can kind of direct them direct them to the appropriate maps application based on what device they're using so if they're using an, an uh, you know an iOS device uh, we can direct them to Apple Maps automatically or if they're using maybe an Android device we can direct them to uh, Google Maps um, it, it's really up to you. Uh, there's a lot that you can do with this type of functionality. It's really just kind of how you want to set it up in your app.